So, uh, self explain self evident title, I would say, is just the closure training chapter. Uh, so, uh, the outline will be just like a bunch of questions who, why, how, challenges, outcomes, retrospect, and questions at the end. Uh, so starting with who am I, uh, I kind of did that in, at the start. I'm like a developer, a data analyst. I've been professionally like developing since around mid-2022. Of course, develop development as a hobby has been there since like, uh, since I was like 13, 14. So, uh, and I started again, started like uh, with closure professionally since mid-2023, uh, around late 2022 was when I like seriously got into uh, closure. And then over the months after that, I was sort of building the business case to get closure into, into the company. Uh, what like the company is called Capita. Uh, it's a play on capital. It's just a private sector development company. Uh, we aim to empower small and medium-sized uh, enterprises and large corporations through research, investment, acceleration, trainings, and business development. So we have like a bunch of divisions for a bunch of things. Uh, iData is one of those things, which is just a platform that, that aims to activate the role of data in decision making through you know data-driven products and services. Uh, so why? like make the trading, uh, like over the, like the past year, I've handled all the backend tasks like on my own. And that was fine when the scope was, we want the dashboard, here's the data shapes. Uh, if you find any other interesting shapes or any other interesting points of analysis, bring them up. Uh, but the scope has since widened and now we are expanding, working on new services. So we need to grow the backend team and we need to work on multiple features at the same time, and thus we need to grow the team. Uh, like how the training came to be and how it was sort of like timelined uh, is through first a selection process, then a curriculum, and then the training would happen. And during the training, there were daily tasks. So after each session, it was three days of like, one day session and then one day office hours. I stole the office hours idea from the closure discord where I'm like sitting there waiting questions. Uh, and at the end of each workshop day, there would be a task uh, to work on and push to GitHub. And then I would review it uh, in the next day. And then after the week is done, there was a final project with a one week deadline. Um, based on the combination of the performance in the final project, uh, how they were like doing day to day, their activity, the selection was uh, made. So it was a, a like we tried to balance technical and uh, personal aspects when selecting. Uh, the selection began with a survey uh, for which we received over 150 applicants, which is which was very surprising at the time because it just like closure was involved in 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 the in the like in the posts on LinkedIn and Instagram and, and Facebook. So like I genuinely was not expecting people to just jump in. So it's either like people are hungry to like learn something new or get a job doing something new or are just generally interested in in picking like the either the domain or the language up. Uh, we try to filter by experience, uh, background, and I emphasized Git knowledge because it's it's sort of a like a litmus test. It's like if you're willing to go and 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 learn like Git and and get good out of that, it's sort of an indicator to me that you're willing to like skip the GUIs uh, or at least get to know your tools more than Git add Git push git pull and i did have like questions about git during the interview about like 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 a, like sort of one step after beginner git which is like questions about merging rebasing so that was sort of a filter there uh, the and after you know after the survey is done after they uh, we filtered them then we went into interviews of the final candidates which again were see like like the, these interviews were sort of, does the application match the applicant? And what's their enthusiasm for learning? Because like we ask them, hey, you do know, this is not like 
a popular language locally? Because as far as we know, we're the only company that works with it. So why are you here? Why are you not like not pursuing anything else? So we got a variety of answers. Uh, uh, as for the curriculum, uh, the three days I mentioned were going over closure, data analysis, and backend development. And this might sound like a tall, a tall order, and it is in in many in many aspects. Uh, but we have sort of opted for people who have who are either recent graduates with like projects or who have worked during their college years or people who have graduated, like very recent graduates who have done some work. So uh, the people we were picking at least had either data analysis or backend as a background. We were not expecting both of them. And of course we were not expecting closure. Uh, so the first day uh, we went over a, like a sort of, like I would code and then I would like uh, ask them questions about what I just did. And the aim of that was to introduce like coding in Clojure, introduce the syntax, uh, introduce the main collections. And uh, this is a link, it's not clickable. It's the introduction section of the Clojure guides. Uh, let me drop the link to that in the... And sorry, where's the chat here? This served as a very useful resource for going over like sort of an overview of, hey, you know, programming language, these are what you know about enclosure. Like it, it served as a, like a very nice uh, sort of bootstrapping curriculum for that. Uh, the second day, we went over data analysis. We had an introduction to tablecloth, clay. There was a walkthrough of common, you know, basic analysis routines like manipulating rows, columns. Uh, we did a small showcase of uh, plotting with clay at the end uh, and high charts. And there were some code blocks that were showing like, uh, hey, this is R, this is Python, this is Clojure. And I, I like the like the R Python closure was kind of like uh, I was kind of proud of that uh, because it was showing everything in a notebook. It was very neat. I think that Yao uh, got to see like a, a like a sort of work in progress version of that at the time. Uh, I I I should have I should have I should have put a picture for that or I I can share later in the in the meeting on Zulip the how it looked at the end. Uh, and then the final day was about backend development. It was very light. We're just introducing what an API is and bootstrapping a very simple server with JT and Reddit. And the point of this was just to show how we use, like, okay, how do we go from data analysis to backend development? Why are they linked? Like, how does iData work? And uh, so on. So it's like at the end of day two, we had a graph in high charts. So I was like, okay, so what happens is the front end are the people who use high charts and we're just gonna supply this data to them after we've done all the work to it. So supplying that is sort of the uh, surface level back end of it. So that's how, you know, I, I wrapped everything from from data analysis to the language to back end development with it. Uh, there were some there were some challenges. Uh, the main one surprisingly was VS Code. Uh, I opted to for VS Code because I wanted you know something everyone was already familiar with, and that worked. Except I used the I think it's called Dips New Template, the basic app template by Sean, which is a fantastic template. One problem I did not account for: VS Code shows you a dialog when you jack in to pick an alias. Y like for this, you did not really need to pick an alias. Picking an alias would actually sort of manipulate your, uh, the way it requires happen. So they were not able to, for example, use tablecloth for like, like people are dear, like we're texting me, hey, we're trying to jack in, we're trying to get tablecloth, we're selecting build or we're selecting run or something and, and things were not working. I'm like, oh, oh, you just need to not select anything. Select, selecting bad, selecting bad. Uh, I I did like you know, showcase that I did not choose the alias, but I did not know that it would cause problems if they had selected had they selected an an, an alias. Uh, so 
uh, other than the VS Code hurdle, they uh, there was a lack of questions within the audience, which I don't know if that's on me or that's on the presentation or the material or them. Uh, but the issue that this caused is, well, I was not sure, like, I was unsure of what they did not know. Uh, thankfully, I had my uh, manager uh, like in the in the session, so he was sort of acting as a questionnaire voice and was asking a lot of questions, and uh, that was helpful. So maybe in the future, I would actually change up the style to have more questions be invoked on my end and have them answer if they don't, you know, have their own questions. So so I can check what they know and what they don't know. And uh, some were asking me, hey, what do we do like after this training if we don't, you know, get picked for like maybe an internship or something? So uh, I did not really have any solid answers beyond, you know, saying, okay, you can use it for your personal projects or it can work as an experience or it can work as a different way of, of viewing programming. Uh, so I'm I'm looking for a more concrete answer on What's after learning closure? Like other than you know applying it to personal projects, which I, I think like is is a big contrast to like how many closure people come to closure, which is a lot of self motivation or like they see something cool, they come to it. I was not able to showcase the the cool thing that someone might latch on to. Uh, so the outcomes were, uh, we have, again, planned to grow the team. So we have an intern now. He is part-time. He is in his, uh, like, second to last year of college, so his fourth year. He had participated in a numerous amount of hackathons. He had worked part-time with other companies before. He has some JS background and some uh, Python background and uh, he excelled in the final project uh, for the for the internship so like for the training so uh, uh that like this is one of the reasons he was picked so and and currently his assignments by me are mainly data analysis tasks so like he's helping prepare pro and process and analyze the data uh I've come to realize that the project had grown from, oh, it's just, you know, jetty with tablecloth into a big thing that has like uh, AWS libraries for Cognito. Uh, Kyle's work on the Google Auth is, is like there too, because I do service counts with Google Sheets. They, like the, the thing, like it, it started small and grew and I did not notice the growth because it was they were really just simple steps one at a time. But like when when I open depths, depths that the and I look at it, I'm like, okay, these are like a lot of libraries. I've had the time, I've had a year to go over all of them. Uh and to him, it's just like this like monolith of things. So I'm slowly onboarding him, just like one library at a time, one thing at a time. Uh, so another, you know, interesting uh, thing that occurred is like uh, a person called Amin in the training uh, had an issue with how Tablecloth was doing the dates for grouping. Uh, and he actually went on Zulip and talked to Daniel about it. So and, and I think there's an issue open now about it. So I think that's like a very lovely outcome that someone like went out of their way to it's get, get an issue out about this. Uh so there, in, in now in retrospect, what would I be doing differently if I would do this again? Which I probably will in in a year or a year and a half if we continue at this pace. Uh, we we grow slowly because that's kind of the philosophy of this team. Uh, so when I say a year, it, it really is like a year. Uh, I would start with a simpler depths.eden that's clear of aliases and i would start with an even like simpler project template like i would still be s s showing the like the bigger hierarchy of like this is where source source files go this is where resources go this is where tests go but like i would strip it down even further i would include a mob programming session at least one uh, because I, I've seen that these are like of great benefit to everyone who has been attending them over at Discord. So this, like this aspect could, you know, very well 
at least show me what people are actually learning compared to what they say they're learning. And I would plan the post training better. Uh, currently, we just left them with a bunch of resources and a group and contacts with me. And I've just been thinking that I can maybe I can do better next time in, in terms of like maybe have a hangout, maybe ask them how I've been do how they how they're doing like two or three weeks after the training, ask them if they have any questions, if they continue to do closure or dropped it, if they have benefited from you know the ways of closure or not, and uh, and so on. Uh, so now uh, I'm open to any questions that anyone might have about either training, how things went, yeah. Yeah, that is great. Yeah, I, I haven't had any experience like that. I mean, the whole thing, the way it happened in your story, I mean, it is so inspiring and and yeah i'm curious what happens with these these people now whether you know they can reconnect whether they may have some opportunity right maybe mm -hmm. not so much right yeah and uh i think i can show that. Is it now sharing a github repo yeah yeah so this is the you don't want your protection uh this is sort of the github repository i had at the time uh, I was thinking maybe I can use Nix like bootstrap the environment, but then I had second thoughts about that because it, it was just easy as easy as just getting closure by Bashka and Java, uh, and maybe I leave Nix for a a latter installation. The intern did pick up Nix very very well and is using that for the development environment. Uh, other than that, I've sort of split the split the repo into like a master that was for day one. There was a day two, there was a task for day one, which should exist here. So the day one task was just like just writing functions, uh, like dealing with maps, dealing with like very basic things. And then day two went into, hey, like this is a data set, uh, it's kind of clean, like just very simply cleaned up for the column names. Uh, like, can you give me a calculation of how many flights there are, how many unique carriers? Like, this is the flights uh, data form from R for people who are familiar with R. So it just like had some uh, tasks and there was always an optional task uh, for like this one, it involved joining the two data sets, for example. Uh, there are some open pull requests. I think these for uh, this one person who submitted them very much a bit later than than when they should have been submitted. So I haven't really had the time to look at them. Uh, other than that, uh, like I just had them make pull requests and I closed them based on, uh, you know, like I just close them when, when they're done because, you know, I don't want to merge into, into the main branch. Uh, and the project final was simply... It's like this sort of specification for, hey, I want a sales trend endpoint. I want a top customer's endpoint. And uh, like, this is what I want to be out. This is what I want the shape to look like. And, you know, just zip everything up and said that, you know, we don't want to make a pull request for, for this one. So, yeah, just wanted to show this one. How, um, Adam, how do how do people in your course install closure? Did did they use Nix or did they use did they have the same type of computer? Was there an issue there? Uh, they used uh, the, uh, most were like okay. We had we had actually we had Windows, we had Linux, and we had Mac users. Uh, so the Mac users were just they just follow the closure installation. So this actually does take you to closure talk uh, for the installation. And uh, that just works for, for Mac users. For Linux users, it also works in the same way. I just install the thing. Uh, Windows users, uh, I actually did go over the installation for WSL on day one. And I had, like, in the email for all you're in, there were instructions on, hey, get WSL, get closure on that. If you have any issues, right. do 
like yeah so by day one everyone had uh, like a like they could write closure into the terminal and it would work okay cool i also had this sort of funny setup like setup script in babashka which uh, for the people who were using uh, nix it also set up some things for them and it uh, sort of like installed the depths new template from uh from Sean, did some naming, did some cleanup, and yeah, there was also a tests thing which I used once only to just to debug with someone uh, what was there and what wasn't. So that's that. Nice. Hey, thank you for listening. Yeah, congrats on that. That's uh, really valuable, and it. Uh... I don't know, shows a lot of like maturity, I think on your, your side, uh, like, uh, you're, you know, be sharing like that and getting people on board. So it's, Thank you. it's great. <laughs>